Pray with me this morning. Father, we thank you for this privilege that we have to gather our hearts together to worship you. Father, in this time that we have, I pray our hearts be open to the message and the story that you have for each and every one of us. Father, I pray this morning that we will see Jesus for who he really is, your son that came as the gift of salvation for each and every one of us. Lord, thank you that we can sing and worship together. Father, may we come this morning to truly see you as you have revealed your great love to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There are many stories that we hear this time of year. That's why I love singing that song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. It kind of gives a battle cry for each and every one of us to go and to do those things that God has given us this greatest gift. As we've been talking over the past couple of weeks about this gift of God that He's given to us, we've talked about how God revealed His plan to each and every one of us, how God revealed him, Himself in the great love that He has for each and every one of us. And through that, how we have seen the great story of hope that God has given us. And we answered the question, why did Jesus come in the form of a baby? And it was because of God's revelation of his hope and redemption for each and every one of us. And today we're going to continue in this great story that God has given us through Jesus, which brings us salvation. And I read the story of the birth of Jesus, but this morning our text is actually going to be in Luke chapter 1. So if you've got your Bible, turn with me to Luke chapter 1, because we're going to talk about this story of the gift of Jesus that has come to us through, through the experience of Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, the birth of John the Baptist. You may think, well, what does John the Baptist have to do with Jesus? It has a lot to do with Jesus because he was the beginning, well, he was part of the story that was given to each and every one of us. We know that God's plan of redemption for all of us, his salvation, happened in the Old Testament as they prophesied and told the story about a Messiah that was going to come, a Messiah that was going to rescue all people, a Messiah that was going to save the children of God. And in their mind, they thought this was going to be a new ruler, a new king, someone who was going to save them from the oppression they were faced with. But we know that that was a different story. If we look in Luke chapter 1, we see the story of the birth of John the Baptist. And if starting in chapter 1, I'm not going to read the whole chapter to you, but I'm going to read a couple of uh, verses in here to give us some background. In verse 5 of Luke chapter 1, it talks about Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zechariah was a priest who belonged to the priestly... Division. Also, Elizabeth, his wife, was a descendant of Aaron. And in verse 6, it talks about both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. These were two people who believed in God. And more than that, they obeyed God in everything that they were taught. Zechariah was a priest. And as we see in this story, all priests had a particular time or rotation that they would come and do their priestly duties. Part of that was sac sacrificing the animals and things that were brought, the grains, the fruits that were brought, the priest, it was their responsibility to do this. Well, Zechariah's time had come for him to be in charge of that. And this is where we find this story for Zechariah. And in verse 11, it talks about when he was there, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And it scared Zechariah to death, as it would I, if an angel came and began speaking to me. And in verse 12, we see that when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Because as you know in the story, Zechariah and Elizabeth had no children. They were kind of past that point of childbearing years. And Zechariah prayed for a son because when you were an Israelite, that was one thing that you wanted was a son to carry on the family legacy and the tradition. And also, like we do in today's time, the more children means the more help around the house or in the fields, or whatever it might be. So Zechariah and Elizabeth had prayed for a son. We pick up in verse 13, it says, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, for your prayer had been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. And he will be a great joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. It was a 
promise given to Zechariah. Now, as with all men, he gladly welcomed that. (laughs) No, he asked questions. For it says in verse 18, Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife is well along in years. Now, men, husbands, this is a good politically correct way of saying that we're old. Because he didn't have to say that about his wife. But you notice what he said. My wife is well along in years. But the angel said to him, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak. Zechariah, in his great wisdom, said, can this really happen? And the angel said, yes, it can, and be silent. Now, wives, wouldn't you like for some of that to happen in today's time? But we go on with this story because there's some great things in this chapter that Luke gives us about Zechariah and Elizabeth, but more importantly about the coming Messiah and the birth of Jesus. And we go on and we hear the story about when Elizabeth and Mary got together and the angel came to Mary and told her she was going to have a child as well. A great miracle was going to happen. And also with this story, when the two of them got together, Scripture tells us that Elizabeth was filled with joy. She felt within her The fact of when she was visiting with Mary and said to Mary, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will bear. But we go on to verse 57. And this is where I want to pick up in the text and read this morning for us. In verse 57. When it came time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. And they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to to find out what he would like to name the child. And he asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was open. And his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. And all the neighbors were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone heard this wonderful, and this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. And he said this in verse 68. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies. And to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. To give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace and the child grew and became strong in spirit and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel you see there's a great story in this message the one where God gave a promise through the angel to Zechariah that he would have a son a son that was going to proclaim the message of the gift of God, the message of salvation for each and every one of us. And it's interesting, interesting for us today as we think about all the stories that we hear about, the story of the birth of Jesus, what this can teach us about salvation. Because sometimes, church, sometimes I even get so overwhelmed with all the Christmas stuff going on that I forget about Jesus. And you think, well, how is that possible? How could you be so overwhelmed with things that you forget about Jesus? We think about all the things that we talk about. But yet, why is it that Jesus revealed himself to us in the form of a baby? And greater than that is why did he proclaim the message of salvation in this way? Why didn't he just say, I'm going to open up heaven and come down so that everybody 
could see this story. Everybody would hear this story. You wouldn't have to post it anywhere because everybody would know because they would see it coming from heaven. But yet God has a way of doing things different than what I think. I don't know if you ever think about that, but God sometimes just does things different than the way that I think they should be done. And to me, that's God revealing himself to me, not the other way around. Because you see, church, a lot of times what we try to do is, God, this is the way that I want things to look. How many of you, that you this Christmas said, this is how I want things to go. This is how I want things to be. This is how I think they should happen. And sometimes, sometimes God says, no, I need to do things different. And that gives us a whole new story to be able to proclaim. Zechariah had a message from God about this story of his son that was going to do great things, to proclaim the message of salvation. In this story, there's a couple of things that I want to share with you. Three things as we talk about why John was chosen and why given this message. Three things about the message of salvation that is taught in this passage. If we look at this together. The first one is the promise of salvation. The promise of salvation. In verse 69, Zechariah told us that he has raised up, he being God, has raised up a horn of salvation. A horn of salvation. Now, the horn was a great symbol of power in the Old Testament. In this particular time, every animal that had a horn was a very powerful animal. Everything that was mentioned. Think about this. Every time in Scripture that we read about something great happening, there's usually some horn that is blown to proclaim what's about to happen. It was a great instrument to show power. And Zechariah says, after he got this message and his mouth opened up, he began to speak. He said, God is revealing a great story to us. He is going to be the horn of salvation. Salvation. For everyone. Now again, people thought that this was going to be the Messiah that was going to come and to save the world from all the oppression. From the Romans, from all the uh, persecution that they were going to have in Israel was going to become the great nation again. And again, remember, that's what they thought. But yet Zechariah had some idea that this horn of salvation was going to be different. It's the promise of salvation that was given to each and every one of us. A proclamation of something great that was going to happen. But also Zechariah gives us a picture of power of salvation, not just the promise, but the power. In verse 71 he talks about the fact that that we would have salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Now again, Zechariah was referring to the fact that all the people that were, were uh, opposing the Israelites They were thinking, this is all going to change. But yet, what they didn't understand was the real meaning of that story. That Jesus was going to come and do more than what they could imagine. And this story was something that he had given John to be able to proclaim. And Zechariah, as the father of John, realizes that. You can understand, if I was Zechariah, I would, one, be trembling in my boots because this great thing was going to happen. And then I would be so eager and anticipating and excited about what was going to happen. Can you imagine what Zechariah was like? Think about their household after he began to speak. I bet he didn't, I bet he didn't shut up at all. He just kept talking and talking and talking. Can you believe this? Can you imagine this? Just talking about all the great things that was going to happen because this was going to take place as it was promised. Because Zechariah says, we'll have salvation from our enemies. You know, when he's also talking about this, I think Luke, when he shared this story with us, he also had in the back of his mind the understanding of what Luke had experienced. The fact that Jesus came to conquer our enemy. And what is our enemy today? You think, oh, I can think of a lot of things where there's enemies all around us. People that don't like me. As Zechariah wrote, the people that hate us. But let me tell you, the greatest enemy of mankind is death. Because it's something that we don't have control of. It's death. The greatest enemy out there is death. Something that we cannot overcome. But Jesus can And that's the great part of this story of salvation. Zechariah said we'll have the power of salvation, the promise of salvation. We'll also have the power because it will bring us salvation over our enemies, the enemy of sin and death. 
And some of you may be following along in your outline, and I've kind of changed things in, my out, in the outline. So in your bulletin, you may be thinking, I can't follow him. But just hang on, because we're going to get there. The first one is the promise of salvation. The second one is the power of salvation. And Jesus had that power, that power to bring to us salvation. The third thing that I want to share with us is the purpose of the salvation. Let's look in verse 74 of what Zechariah shares with us. Zechariah says that this horn of salvation is going to come, a salvation from our enemies and from the ones who hate us, to do what? To rescue us from the hand of our enemies, to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days. Now again, Zechariah was the father of John the Baptist. John the Baptist had just been born. John was going to proclaim the coming Messiah to us. The Messiah hadn't even been born yet, and yet Zechariah still knows that that's the promise that God has given us. That's the story that I want to share. That's what's going to be given to my son to be able to proclaim to all the people. This is what you need to know about Jesus, that he's going to come and change everything. Change everything. Because it's going to be salvation for all of us to rescue us, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies, to be able to conquer our enemies. Because we know in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us sinned. And the, the greatest enemy that we have is death, and death is brought on because of sin. I mean, think about that. What did sin do when it came into our understanding and existence, it brought death because it's that separation that we have from God. But yet the promise is that there will be salvation over our enemies of sin and death. Second thing that he shares with us is that it's to enable us to serve him without fear. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, we're reminded, Then he said to them, being Jesus, said to them, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. To be able to do that and submit ourselves to God, to be able to know that we now are enabled to serve him. That means that we have what we need to serve him. The problem is, sometimes we do things on our own. I told the first service that one of the things that I remember is getting my first tool kit. You know, and there wasn't a whole lot of things in there, but, and I don't really remember when that was. It wasn't a toy kit. I'm talking about a real man's tool kit, you know, the toolbox with actual tools in it that I could use to fix something, which was a hard lesson to learn because it didn't fix things. <laughs> but I remember that toolbox. I thought I could fix anything and do anything. I thought I could work on my vehicle, but I didn't know anything about vehicles. I thought I could build anything. But it really wouldn't last. But you know how it is when you get something like that and be able to do things. Well, you know the problem is sometimes we think we can fix everything within us. And the great thing about this story that I'm talking about is that this story is about Jesus who fixed it all for us. I don't need a toolbox when it comes to my salvation. But a lot of times we try to bring our own tools. We try to do our own thing. And because of our tools, we think we can handle anything. But yet, who in here has conquered Life, because I know I haven't, because there's problems that come along, and there's times that come along, but yet what I have to remind myself, especially in this time of the year, is the story of what Jesus has done. He didn't just come to be born, but he came to fulfill a purpose, something that God has given us, the greatest story, and that's what John proclaimed to all the people. When Zechariah says that we might be able to be rescued. And to be enabled to serve him without fear, that we would be able to approach him in holiness and righteousness. That's the third thing of this purpose, in holiness and righteousness. In Romans chapter 5, verse 21, the Apostle Paul reminds us, So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, the amazing thing about this story of salvation is that Jesus did something for us that we can't do on our own to overcome our enemy, which is sin and death, so that we might be able to live in holiness and righteousness. That means that holy, we are set apart. That means that we're different. Some of you may today say, well, why is it so hard to be a Christian today? Why is it so hard to follow Christ every day? Because we can't do it on our own. Because Jesus comes in and 
takes over. We're set apart to be different, to live different. Why? Because God calls us to be holy. But more than that, to live righteous, meaning to live right with God. That in everything that we do, we follow Jesus' example. In everything that we do, we want to be like Jesus and all of his characteristics. Does that mean that I can be as powerful as Jesus? No, unless God wills that and a miracle happens. But you know what? The same spirit that was in Christ is now within us. And that's why Paul says that, listen, um, that we... Sin reigned in death, but because of grace, we might reign in righteousness through this eternal life that Jesus has given us. You see, Zechariah knew this great story of hope and redemption. Because in verse 77, he says, To give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. Zechariah says, talking about Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. Zechariah, the father of John, who was going to proclaim about the story of the Messiah. You see, Zechariah knew that Jesus was going to come to give his people knowledge of the salvation, this gift that God has given us. Zechariah wanted to share that. You see, when Zechariah got his voice back and he began to speak, he didn't talk about all the things that he wanted to. He says he praised God. Why? Because he knew what God was doing. The great story of salvation. You see, what we have to understand when we look at this story is that sin brings death, but salvation brings life. And this is the promise, the gift that was given to us. This is why Zechariah wrote and said these things. Because this was a great story to be able to share so that all would understand about salvation. In John chapter 1 verse 5 it says this. The, John wrote this. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. And there came a man who was sent from God and his name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Zechariah understood the message, the story of salvation that was going to be given to his son to proclaim so that all people would know that Jesus brings salvation. Life through salvation. This makes me ask this question today. This is the greatest story that we could ever share. Not that Jesus was born, but that Jesus brought salvation. Zechariah understood that message that was given to him, and he shared it with other people. John the Baptist understood that message that was given to him, and he wanted to share because Scripture tells us that he wanted to prepare the way, as the prophet Isaiah proclaimed, to prepare the way of the Lord. God is asking you and me to share this story of salvation. But if we don't understand this story of salvation for ourselves, how can we share it? Zechariah understood. He was a priest. He knew what the promise of the Messiah was going to bring. And he passed that on to his son, John. And John proclaimed as not he not being the light, but the light would come into the world to save all people. How do you and I share this story? How are you going to, this Christmas, share the story of salvation? Because it's not about the presents. It's not about all we're going to eat. It's not about all the fun times we have together. It's about salvation, being saved from our enemy of sin and death. For some of you today, you may have never experienced salvation and you don't have a story. If you do not accept Christ as your Savior, then where's your story of salvation? Some of you today need to do like what these guys have done and ask Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. Because they're sharing a story through their baptism today. They were sharing a story of salvation that came to them. What are you sharing today? Do you have a story of salvation? Because Zechariah realized the message that God was giving him to proclaim that his son would be the one that would prepare for the Lord to come, for Christ to come. 
And Jesus came as the greatest gift for us through salvation. What story are you sharing today? Let's pray.